Today, if you follow the news in Israel, you see that there's a tension, it appears in the news and the headlines, between especially the ultra-Orthodox world and the secular world, and you hear of issues of why don't ultra-Orthodox Jews serve in the army. We have to appreciate how much of this current situation is based on the historical reality of the past and the origins of, of Zionism over 100 years ago. Overwhelmingly, the Zionist movement, not exclusively, but overwhelmingly was created by Eastern European intellectuals who had left their Judaism behind, moved into being secular, enlightened intellectuals, left that and become Zionists. And their attitude towards their modern Jewish nationalism, even though they themselves often came from religious homes, was at best ambivalent. But they did not, most of them for sure, did not want to create a modern Jewish state that was a biblical state full of religious Jews. They wanted to create a new Jew, a fighting, farming Hebrew, an independent, proud Jew connected to the land. A Jew could stand up for himself, not like the ghettoized Jews of Eastern Europe, at the mercy of the czar, beaten down, economically dependent, no self-respect. This created huge tension in the, world, the Jewish world of Eastern Europe between the rabbinic leadership and the Zionist movement. And there was two places it was known in Eastern Europe. If your kids went to these two places a hundred years ago, they would lose their Judaism. One was the Golden and Medina of America, and the other was sadly the land of Israel. They'd be sucked in by that Zionist ideology and drawn away from Torah. And it created a huge tension and a conflict which continues in the Jewish world until today. Because in the, in the collective minds of the rabbinic leadership of Eastern Europe, the whole reason the Jewish people lost the land of Israel was because we didn't keep the Torah. How can we expect, they said, to rebuild a Jewish state that's based on the same problems we lost the land in the first place? A bunch of people who aren't keeping the Torah, a bunch of secular Jews in the land can't do it. It's going against God's will. We're going to lose the land again. It won't be successful. And the debate carried on. And we know that, of course, there was a centrist movement of religious Jewish nationalists, the Mizrahi movement, founded in the very early 1900s. But that tension carried on all the way until the modern world today. But today we look back in hindsight and we see that tremendous things were accomplished by the secular Jewish leadership. They put the physical infrastructure into the land of Israel. They built the roads and the sewage system and the electric lines and the phone system and the army and the ports and everything was put in. They put the body back in place. But we understand that the Jewish people, as the little Israeli folk song goes, Eretz Yisrael bli Torah kamoguf bli neshama. The land of Israel without Torah is like a body without a soul. We see, if you look back on the history of the Zionist movement, that it was really a movement that lived for pretty much about a hundred years, from the beginning to the end. It, going through a number of generations, it accomplished tremendous things in reconquering the land and building the land and putting the infrastructure in. But now that job is done, and now we understand that rather than this tension continuing between religious and secular, really the job is for those Jews who are connected to their Judaism and who understand what the land of Israel is all about, to now put the body, now take that body, which is complete, and put a soul into it, to return the Jewish values and the Jewish ideology and the Torah values into the land of Israel, and then we'll have a complete byproduct. We'll have a beautiful product, as a matter of fact. We'll have the rebirth of the physical land of Israel and the rebirth of the Jewish people with the unique set of values, the Torah, creating a unique nation, which will ultimately create what is it's supposed to be, a nation that's a light unto nations and a model for the rest of the world to follow.